all aboard and welcome back everyone to another episode of Animation Station, this time for Digimon Adventure Tri Coexistence. I am Brandon C. McClure. With me on this, on this digital world journey is Ben Magnet. Hello, I am here. I'm ready to continue talking about this awesome Digimon uh, film, this Digimon movie, and oh boy, let's go. I'm, ooh, man. I, I got some thoughts. I got some feelings. They're good thoughts and good feelings. I and uh, yeah, this was this one was a doozy. This one was a real humdinger. If you if uh, some people say, I I've never heard you say a lot of these words. I'm flabbergasted by this. Um, <laughs> all right. Anyway, uh, we are we so, yes yeah, so we're talking about Digimon Adventure Try Coexistence, the fifth part in the Digimon Adventure Tri series, uh, moving all the way through the Tri's franchise. Um, so after this, one more. Mm -hmm. uh, exciting times. So this is directed by Kitaro Mot uh, Motone Motonaga, written by uh, Mitsu Mitsutaka Hirotu Hirota. Uh, this came out in 2017, obviously. Um, came out in the States a little bit later. Once again, we're talking about the Shout Factory dubs, not necessarily the original, the original Japanese language dubs. Um, but... Let's get right into it. And I'm so interested because, Ben, I think you and I have differing opinions of this one. Probably, probably uh, my biggest opinion about this movie is that you can definitely, when the movie ends, you can definitely tell this is the penultimate film of mm -hmm. the Digimon Adventure Tribe. As in, there's, there's a lot of setup, there's a lot of stuff that happens, there's a I wouldn't call it there's a big cliffhanger, but there's a big thing that happens in the last, say, 20 so minutes it's of the movie. Yeah, it's, it's a, a it's a big cliffhanger. A big thing happens and you're you're left shocked. And then the Digidestines are facing down this giant threat. And even I mean, I, I will admit that there are there are parts of this movie that I did. kind of, My eyes kind of glazed over a little bit, but I was still entertained for the most part but you can tell this is like the depth the penultimate film so and actually my, oh. so real quickly my issue with this okay. with this movie is i'm i'm so confused <laughs> i don't <laughs> understand too. by the end of this movie i'm so confused what's jenny's plan who's king drazel what's homeostasis's plan what's happening i'm so yeah. i don't jessmon alpha the, the fight between jessmon alphamon omnimon and whoever Mekumon's mega mega form is meant to be mm -hmm. is is cool it's a good looking fight i really enjoy how it's animated but i don't understand who's fighting for who i guess king drazel controls alpha mon thank goodness i'm not because i no I, no, no. I, hey, hey, hold on, on. jessmon controls is controlled by by jessmon is controlled by homeostasis and alpha mm -hmm. mon is controlled by King Drazel. King Drazel. And we still don't know who King Drazel is. Nope. No clue. And, and then so what's the what's the goal? Who and whose goal is it to destroy the real world or merge the real world with the digital world? Or uh, or destroy the digital? I'm so confused at I, what the purpose of this is. I am so happy because dude, you and I are on this hundred percent on the same page of this. Cause there because when we were because when we got to that. Fine. I mean, we'll get into other parts of the movie too. I have notes for the other bits of the movie, but when we get to that, I was just like, like even when Ty looks up and says, "I don't even know who to root for anymore," I'm like, "Bro, neither do I." Say, Joe has a Joe. That's Joe's line. I don't even know. I don't even know who to root for anymore. And I just literally wrote, wrote this line, and I just said, "Same, Joe." Yeah, same. same. Because then, then like you get this whole bit. It's okay. So I know we're like jumping way to the end of the movie, but I just gotta talk, get this off my chest because when Mako says "kill Mekuman," just like end it, where she goes full on like depressed, like monotone anime, like you know, classic anime style, where her glasses get the full glare and she's just you know super like out of it, right? And then Ty says, "Okay, yeah, I'm gonna make this call," and then goes into the speech about how he fights for his friends. I'm like, but you right. literally then, just said, and then Matt. And then Matt is like, we can't ki kill Mekumon. And then, but but Ty w had just made this whole speech about how they're not going to kill Mekumon, or yeah. like, is the purpose is, or is the purpose that they're going that they don't want 
homeostasis to kill my Kumon. They need to be the ones to kill my Kumon. And I'm so I'm like, I, I I've lost the plot. Like I've Ty, lost the plot. I almost called him Kai. <laughs> That's my roommate. I'm like Ty. You really just said I am willing to make the call to have Omnimon just just murk this mega evolution of Mikumon. And then you go to the rousing speech of how he fights for his friends. I'm like, what the frack are you saying here, Ty? What the blip is going on? And then he's like, we're going to fight for Mikumon. Literally cut to the fight with between Jessmon and Alphamon. Omnimon is fighting with Mikumon. I'm like, what is... Pick a side, god you know, damn. There's just too many moving pieces, I think, yes. in this movie for in this movie franchise in general, that they've not I don't think they had plot for six movies. Uh, up until <laughs> uh, I will not lie, like watching this movie, trying to scope out the plot, it kind of reminded me of trying to linearize the plot of Kingdom Hearts. And now Kingdom Hearts, I will admit that Kingdom Hearts is a much more crazier story and plot line because we all know Tetsuya Nomura, the director of the games, wrote each game as it was coming out. He didn't have a whole plan for this. But this definitely felt like, hey, let's just like throw a whole bunch of twists in, twists and turns in. Because going back from Reunion all the way up to, say, uh, Loss, I, I thought was a pretty decent plot line. You have the Digimon back with their partners. The Digidestin are back together. They got to stop. Um, these dis- these distortions. There's this big reboot that happened that their Digimon lost their memories, and by this film, it's like nothing ever happened. There was still no like. And I hey, guess homeostasis. Lost- homeostasis wanted the reboot to happen because it would help. It would like the hope was that the reboot would make it so that Mekumon, uh wouldn't be infected anymore, and then also also King Drazel wanted. The reboot because it would rebirth all the evil Digimon, but the reboot serves no purpose to the plot whatsoever. No, it just throws in. If there was a decent plot, or no, there, if the the plot for the reboot was like the consequence of the reboot was in loss with Sora's film, where it was Sora trying to get to come to grasp about how she lost um, Biomon, how everyone else is getting the Digimon back, but she really had to work to get Biomon's trust again. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I mean, I'm a little, I'm a little lost, if you know yeah, what I mean. Th- oh, I 100% get what you mean. Uh, <laughs> let's talk uh, about some good stuff, though. Let's move, let's move backwards yes. to the film. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll return to the end of the film because that um, is, but yeah. So one thing I did want to say, um, when I pop- popped this in last night, I realized that my copy of Coexistence was sealed. I You've never, never seen this movie before? I have never, because I, I knew there was a point where the I think the last the last film I saw was Lost, because that was the one you and I did see in theaters. I'm 99% okay. sure that was the one you and I saw together. I've never so going forward, I've never seen the so for Coexistence and Future, which is the final one, and of course Last Ev- Evolution Kazuna. Mm-hmm. I've never seen those movies. And my first note is either I saw this in theaters or I've never seen it because my copy was sealed. And it turns out like as I'm watching this movie, it's like, yeah, I don't remember any of this. So for me, it was a brand new experience, which was a little harder for me to take notes because when I see a thing for the very first time, I want to try and fully engage it. I want to try mm-hmm. and like with the other films, it's like I've seen these films before. It's been a long time, but I still have some memories. Whereas this one, it was a little hard going back and forth, taking notes, but there were also times where I think I do need to watch this one again. I probably won't watch it again for a while. But there were some parts where I was honestly, I I don't want to say bored, but I don't know. It's just there's, because there's of, a couple of there's a couple of moments where I definitely looked at my phone. Um, I, I I get to the point where if I find myself because I'm such a phone junkie, like I'll often find myself just looking at my phone. Um, mm-hmm. But if I'm engaged in a film, I won't like that. that That's my barometer for like how engaged in the movie. I, I like, I just won't look at my phone. So, but there's a few moments where I'm just like, Oh, what's Twitter doing these days? Yeah. Oh, right. For I'm me, watching a movie. For me, it wasn't, it wasn't just looking at my phone. It was, I was falling asleep or, and well, you, did like, watch this at, you did watch this at 1am. Actually, I watched this at 3 a.m., but that's not a, that's neither here nor there. I, I had to finish the soca, I'm sorry. But that's neither here nor there. Um what was but because there were parts where I like I could notice I was drifting off, but thankfully it wasn't enough to like miss major plot lines. Cause you know, when the action started picking up, when more when the digitestin like you know, when the plot 
whatever was there a part of a plot was picking up. I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm perked up again. I'm ready to go. But I would definitely say that I think this is my least favorite movie thus far. Mm, yeah, it's possible. I don't know if it's my least favorite. I want to, uh, I, I did just look at my notes, so I'm going to bring this one up. Where did Himikawa get a gun? <laughs> I have one of those notes too. I have, I, my note is, my note for that is later when she's in like the Black Sea and I'm just like, what did she get a gun? Does she, she has a gun, gun or... She has a she has a, this like big like rifle gun in the beginning of this movie, right? Yeah. When she's looking for Tapirmon, and I'm looking at this like, she did not bring that with her. No, she didn't. <laughs> it's like where did she, did she have like a magic Fortnite uh, stash thing that where she was keeping that rifle? And it's like where did the rifle go? Why does she have a pistol? What what what's going on here? It was really funny to to. It was really funny to see that moment because like I, so Himikawa has two sequences in this movie, and once again, useless. Yeah, I, I'm I'm so upset at how this character uh, turned out because it doesn't her character doesn't impact the plot at all once she's in the digital world looking for Tapiermon. Like, okay, cool, it's cool that she's got she. I I like the lore surrounding her and her and dude's name, uh, Nishijima. Nishijima. I like the lore surrounding them that their Digimon partners became the harmonious ones. Um, I like her. I, I like the idea that she pers- that she was. Uh, manipulated into doing this reboot because of uh, because it would bring back Tapirmon, who was her partner. I I like all that. I I just wish it impacted the plot in any sort of way yeah. because the main huh. the main characters have no idea this is happening I, at yeah, all. It, it kind of upsets me that Nishijima doesn't flat out say that he is Ditch Destined as well. That would yeah, have... the kids the kids never realize that they no. are Digidestin, that these were, never... were pe- previous Digidestin. No, and then I really, I honest to goodness wish that the Himikawa storyline where she's trying to find Tapiermon, where she's going through this absolute crazy, I don't know what kind of arc she's going through, where she is doing everything she can to get her digital partner, her Digimon partner back. Is just it's completely thrown by the wayside, and honestly, I feel like there's a really good arc in there. It's a really good fold to have Himikawa be this antagonistic force. Like earlier she, in the, she, in, as I said in the last movie, she should be the Jedi figure. She should, but she's not. She's just like tape. She just is constantly falling down this rabbit hole of absolutely losing it, and I'm like, where where is this going? And then we yeah. have Bat Jedi. I mean, I know he's not really a bat, but he's just upside down on a rope. So to me, he looks. You like a bat. Me, did you did you ever read Justice League Dark by James Ten, by James Tynan the Fourth? I don't believe I did. There's a character called Upside Down Man who's walking up on the who's walking on the ceiling, uh, and he, it looks it looks very similar. <laughs> upside Down Man, that's funny. Um, he's a uh, he's an evil demon from the darkness. Yeah, makes sense. Uh, let's see. Um, my my first note actually involving the plot is actually concerning the Kumon when we first see her in the beginning, where you see like the feathers and the feathers and the blood. Mm-hmm. And after she comes out of the woods, and I'm like, did Mekumon just like kill slash eat birds? When we find out later, she does. What's interesting about Mekumon is what we learn in this movie is that she has a shard of Apocalymon within her. Yeah, I actually liked that. I even wrote things like, oh damn, Apocalymon was mentioned because. The, I mean, we get mentions to like the original show. Um, we get like obviously the Dark Masters, and we get a few mm-hmm. of like um, we see Koagamon because that was the first Digimon the kids ever fight. But Apocalymon being you know like the big bad of the finale of the original series, to me that was a cool pull. I'm like, oh, so like Apocalymon is still doing some bad shit. I I like that. I want let's dive into yeah. this more. It's a it's a nice way to bring it to bring it kind of full circle and this idea that Mekumon should never have been born that she is born out of Apocalymon is is kind of this interesting idea, but again it's 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 just it's just, it's another slew of interesting ideas that really don't go very far in this movie in this in this series because um, like Apocalymon oh I actually don't remember reunion uh, I actually don't remember future that well. So Apocalymon might show up. I don't recall him showing up. So like this isn't like Mekumon isn't a, a isn't a um a, a servant of Apocalymon. She is merely just created from him. And so she's her own independent being, but Apocalymon doesn't really serve any any function in this story outside of birthing her, I guess. You know what 
if I can make a a, a comparison, mm-hmm. it's kind of like Oob in Dragon Ball GT. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, because Oob was, of course, created from Majin Buu or yeah. Kid Buu, essentially. But like Oob, even though Oob was born from this supreme evil destructive being he is his own person and he trains with you know obviously he trains with goku becomes a really good fighter and he helps with the z fighters and everything but with mikumon being a shark like uh essentially born of apocalymon but not wanting to have and with mako being essentially the balance where as long as she's close to mako she can gain control she's nice kind loving she's not i don't, I don't want to say crazy but she's she doesn't get sad or destructive. Mm-hmm. I still really think that that could have been more, like, like like you said, there are good snippets of ideas, but they don't capitalize on them. There's too much in this in this in this series of movies, and like you can do that with you have you have a TV series, you can you can incorporate a lot of different elements mm-hmm. um, and pay them off in time and as they come up because that's. Well, that's the benefit of you get a TV series. What we've yeah. seen so so frequently with like event television or um, the kind of TV shows that we get right now with like streaming shows with Netflix and Amazon and all sorts of things is that they treat them like uh, the Marvel shows are a, are a really good example of this, mm-hmm. where they, they 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 give them all these elements, all these TV show plots, but they have to, but they feel like because their movie structured, they have to pay them off in the final act, and that's not right. necessarily the case that you have to do with a TV series. You can pay them off as you go. That's mm-hmm. the benefit of this. And we're not, we're seeing a similar problem with the tri movies that we keep getting more interesting kind of ideas woven throughout, but none of them are being paid off. They're all waiting until the final movie. And you don't need to do that. You can pay them off as you go. Right. And yeah, that's kind of I, a bummer. Yeah, it is. Especially because when we talked about like reunion and um, determination, which I actually I think I agree with you. Determination might be my favorite movie because that was determination rules. Ter- determination is gr- is great. I mean, I still I like reunion, but the more of uh, uh, removed I am from determination, the more I'm like determination is freaking rad. Yeah, man. Also, I, I also I kind of like Lost too. I think Lost and Determination are my two favorites. Determination Lost is, Lost is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um. I, I was going to say, oh, uh, just going back to the note, I have this note that I just want to say. And my first, like, fun note is, uh, like, when all the in-train Digimon are looking up and talking, and then someone says Poros, and they go, that's what they're called! And all, oh, all yeah. in unison. I was like, God, I love the in-train Digimon. They're just so cute. Um, I, so, I don't, I'm, I don't believe it bugs me. Um, there's a... Um, there's a, there's a there's a few moments in the in this movie that I do want to highlight that I really like, mm-hmm. um, and once again it kind of goes back to what I think the biggest strength of the original show was, which is the character building moments. And what we're seeing here, there's a scene around the campfire. I really like. I really like the scene around the campfire when they're when they're talking about when they're taught when again, May is dealing with a lot of problems because she feels very responsible for what's going on with Mekumon. Mm-hmm. Which honestly, I don't, I don't blame her for. Um, and she's kind of, and and the the, the other Digidestin are talking about how they, you know, this wasn't easy. You know, the, they're all connected through their digital, through their digi partners. Like this is, this is what, this is what the job is. This is what we do. And it's a really sweet scene. It's a really nice character building scene. And we get another one when they're in the classroom. And not, 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 I'm not talking about the scary stories moment, but like. Mm-hmm. When Ty goes to May to like comfort her, and he does a terrible job about it. Yeah, yeah. My favorite line of the movie comes from. Can you hear that? Yeah, I can hear it. Man, that guy flew low. Yeah. Um, they have an airport next door. Is why it happens sometimes. Mm -hmm. So we, so like, it has my favorite moment in in this movie, which is when the Agumon goes to comfort May, and Gomamon goes, "Why did we send Agumon?" (laughs) <laughs> yeah that was that was a good moment it's or a even, really funny moment even when they're all like looking and like they're watching ty and may try to like ty is trying to talk to may and comfort her and all the other digimon are just like mm, i gotta report this to sora i gotta report this to kari and then it's like what do you think agamon i love this floor and they're like yeah. oh well, it's really funny it's really uh Gabamon has like i should report this to matt because Gavamon now believes that Matt and Ty are a couple. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's very funny. It is. It is very um, funny. And, and then when and then when um 
but when Agumon shows up and Agumon's like, maybe you should, maybe we should have food um, or something. And they're just like, oh my God. Yeah. They're just like, uh, uh, you know, I think there's a time I want to have like a counter every time, like, especially from loss forward where Ty always says nothing has changed when Agumon mentions food. I feel like, dude, we get it. Agumon loves food. You can stop saying that. Sometimes uh, it's funny, but sometimes they do. Um, sorry. I, we, you and I both woke up pretty, pretty late today. Um, sometimes it's funny and sometimes it's uh, a little excessive. I think here it, it's kind of funny because, um, you know, this is a rebooted Agumon. This yeah. is not an Agumon who has dealt with a lot of things so far. Right. Right. So like I kind of give it some, I get, I give some of it a pass, but he is probably the, the most weirdly written in this series. And this mm-hmm. could be nostalgia goggles. Like I'm going to be very clear that this could be nostalgia goggles. Um, I don't remember him being this naive in the original shows. Not, neither do I. And I think this is also nostalgia. Goggles. I mean, I know Aquaman's thing. I think from even the original series, he was always a big like eater. He would always like comment. Oh yeah, no, him. he's always been into. Yeah, he's he's always been like that. But I, I think I also remember that Agumon has like these really these other great moments as well. Yeah. Where uh, I'm trying to remember because the thing I'm going back to is like when Ty pushed him and he digivolved as a Skull Greymon and Agumon is like Ty, I can't go through that again. And then he, Ty realizes he pushed him too hard and their bond grows stronger. Eventually, we get Metal Greymon. Yada yada yada. Oh, uh, well, I want to say I, I do want to say like I think this I think this movie series kind of does Agumon a little dirty sometimes. However, I do think oh, yeah. this moment is good. Um, I do. Think, uh, I think so too. And but I also I, I I found it I found this really interesting watching this movie. The animators of this of the series, they love Patamon. Have you oh, noticed? Yeah. Yeah, like the animators of this movie, like they will whenever they animate Patamon, it's in the cutest. It's in the cutest way they could possibly do it. And yeah. there's no in between. There's no like Patamon's just there. It's just Patamon is just always cute no matter when he's showing up. And I noticed that this time re- watching this video, I was like, there's a scene where like TK's holding Patamon and like, you know, you, you animate that. But they have his, they have Patamon's like leg up, like, li- like over TK's arm and then one down. And you're just like, that's excessively cute. Why'd yeah. you do that? Yeah. It's I I don't know if that should be just me because Patamon is like the most stuffed like the literally the most stuffed animal like if there's a plushies a Digimon I know they're plushies Digimon they have to be somehow oh, there. Yeah. Patamon's like the easiest one and he's the cutest one. I won't lie. I think second I would be probably Gatomon, but other than that, Patamon is like the most adorable one. Nah, man, nah, man, Gomamon. Yeah, my Gomamon. homie Gomamon. Remember, remember when he had a phone? Yeah, remember he had a phone? That was so funny. I love that. <laughs> it's good moments in the movie. The thing, the thing that I really like about the series, just in general, are the character moments. I think specifically the character moments shine really well. There's this idea that what we're dealing with right now is this, you know, it, this whole series like going into adulthood, right? Like we are, we are transitioning from from one stage of our lives to another, and so and and that's that's done through these Digidestin. What was so interesting about the campfire sequence is that it really put into perspective this idea that these characters were starting to grow apart because it had been so long. They, you know, they are, they are growing apart and they don't know what to do about that because their lives are taking them in all sorts of different directions. Enter their Digimon again. And then they come back together and their bond is reformed and it's stronger than ever. And that's what they're talking about in this, in this, in this campfire sequence where like, you know, they will be friends forever because of this shared bond that they have. Mm Mm-hmm. But they were beginning to forget that, and what's and the Digimon came back at a time when they needed to remember, and which is why I li- which is why again I like these character moments because it helps build up these relationships in an organic way and in a way that helps cement these movies as far better than they probably would be if these yeah. character moments weren't here. Because again, the plot has way too convoluted at this point. Oh yeah, once we get to coexistence, it's just like what is yeah it's just like a moment that's what is going on uh there's another thing that i want to bring up also which mm-hmm. is this is also because this is also when the digidestin realize that this relationship can't be one-sided anymore mm-hmm. you know it, it's always like the digimon protect the digidestin the digimon do the fighting and now they're sitting here going that's that can't be true anymore 
we need to protect them as well as us, as well as they protect us. It needs to be a two way street. And I really like that approach to the series. Um, it's an approach that they're taking in Digimon Adventure 2020, um, which is really nice to to see also. But I really like that they realize now, especially with this reboot, that these children essentially need to, you know, they they have protected us for years, and now it's our turn. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I I think that's a really good moment as well. Yep, definitely. Um. <sighs> I'm trying because I have a few like notes. Like so, some of my notes are just like random funny bits. Like when Go Mimi for it. says, Throw them like, out. like when Mimi says, um, there's no Digimon that shouldn't have been born. And I'm like, uh, I don't know, Mimi, my Erosmon, maybe he shouldn't have been born. You're Dark not Masters? made, you're not made an evil Digimon. You become an evil Digimon. I know, I know. I just thought I my Erosmon started as a little goopy egg, also. Yeah, he did. He did, but then he turned into one of the most villainous Digimon ever created. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Um, but also, I just thought it was funny about how I want to say during the scary story sequence where every single Digimon was freaked out, but Agumon was just like chomping away, doesn't care. Mm-hmm. I, I I like the um, the scary story sequence. Joe's was that he got a B minus, and everyone's like, Joe, <laughs> come on. Yeah, uh, that's not scary. It's like, have you ever gotten a B minus? Like, no one cares about a B minus except for you. And I'm like, dude, B minus ain't that bad. It is to him. I know. I know. It's the scariest thing ever, apparently, to him. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to. Th- yeah. Really? Because we did talk about the almost to the, the climax, the climax of the film where they're back in the digital world. They're constantly fighting and. And it's just like who's who do we want to win? Like obviously we want I'll go, we want the kids to oh, win. I want to I want to I want to pause you and go back to the um campfire to so not the campfire the scary story but bit. Okay. So the so I think Mako, I think they go a little too far on making her on, on her whining because we get it twice in this movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like this idea like oh woe is me oh I'm. I'm the reason for all of this. This is happening because of me. And we get a couple of flashbacks of her uh, seeing Me- Mekumon like freak out, especially in the lab with her dad. Right. Um, so, and, and I like that sequence and I, and I like Mako for the most part. I just think that I do think, I do think that they do it a little too far in mm-hmm. the self-righteous bits being this, like, like you don't need it twice in this movie. You don't need to have the Digidestin twice be like, Hey, we're in this together. This isn't your fault. You know, this is something that beyond your control. Mikuman is your partner. Like you have to, you have to like believe in her. You have to believe in us. And blah blah. We don't need that twice. Even though I like both of those scenes, and I do think that her story is very funny. Like everyone's like freaked out about her story. Um, <laughs> but I, I think that they, I think, I think that once was probably enough. Yeah, I I 100% agree because when we get to the second bit, especially near the end of the movie, I'm just like, we just went through this earlier. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, oh, can we do something else? There's another moment that I want to highlight, though, before we get into the final battle, which is uh, when Kari is possessed by homeostasis again. Mm -hmm. And Kari fights back? Yeah. They're all talking talking to Kari and then Kari starts yelling at homeostasis. I was like, "That's, Mm -hmm. that's cool. That's a really cool moment to kind of give Kari this, her agency back and be like, "Hey, oh yeah, stop using me as stop using me as this vessel. Like you're not, you're wrong. Like we're th- this." Um, oh, but, I, go ahead. No, sorry, I do have another note that I re- I remembered I want to talk about. Um, one of the things I did enjoy, I have enjoyed about all the films up to this one, was that each film was focused on a different set, or it was it was it tried to focus on a different set of Digidestined. Like the cover art said, this is movies about so and so. Especially determination, it was mostly focused about um, Joe and Mimi. I love that. The first one reunion is about Matt and Ty, and whereas I still think Izzy kind of got shafted in Confession, TK was the main focus, and with Sora and Loss. Mm-hmm. Now the cover for this one was Kari. I was really hoping that Kari would have her arc. Or not at like her arc specifically, but she would go through something. And I was really hoping for that, but she has the same problem that Izzy had in the third film. 
Yeah. Where it, where it's clearly the movie is clearly about Mako at this point and it's focusing very heavily on Mako and the other and the Digidestin as a whole and then at the end it becomes Kari's movie and that's that's a shame because like the whole movie the one of my other biggest issues with this movie is that like like TK like uh Tentomon becoming Hercules Capitarimon it doesn't make sense that Kari all of a sudden has this moment where she's like, okay, yeah, kill all the Digimon, kill all the humans or whatever her purpose is. I'm not even sure. I like it's know. because we don't get anything with her up until that moment to have her have this. I get it. She thinks her brother's dead. It's a huge turn. It's a huge moment of depression for her, but her turn to turn, um, Gatamon, I don't know. Gatamon's in training form. I forgot. Uh, I know it's Salomon, but I don't remember the one. I don't remember the little ball with the tail. Um, yeah. What when she when she's able to dark digivolve evolve to her mega form? I don't, I don't get the purpose of that, and I don't understand how we got from A to B there. And that's another. That's again another failing of this movie of this movie series of not focusing on the right people. Like if this was meant, to, if Kari was the end goal, if Kari's arc was the end of this movie. Then mm-hmm. Kari needed to be the focus of the movie. Yeah. And and that that's a real shame. And if you like you didn't want to focus on Kari because she's one of the second Digidesin also, like that's also fine. But then don't give her that moment at the end where, she, where the movie becomes Evangelion. Mm, I thank you. I just <laughs> <laughs> I literally my last note, 100 percent I am shitting you not is okay when did this turn into evangelion no like for real 100 percent. like it's That's wild the that she, evangelion damn it that she, that she turns into an angel and she goes up into the sky like it literally evoking evangelion imagery yes. like to a t to I'm a expect- t i'm expecting to hear cruel angels cease to start around in this bitch but i'm just like this is just evangelion now That's if, the they angel from that, Eva. if they had played that in the credits that would have been funny as hell it would have been. I'm sure someone probably put an edit in there, or at least probably played Fly Me to the Moon. A- anyways, I was, I was hoping for Kari to go through this whole thing. Like when she, it, you get nuggets of it where she's talking about how the digital world hates them and it wants them out. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, but then when they finally do get out, she Kari is sidelined essentially, and I, I 100 get it that she lost her brother. Her brother, her and her brother have this really great and strong bond, just like Matt and TK do. And when she thinks that tie is gone, and it forces not Godoman to dark Let's digital. Find into, out. Well, you keep talking. I'm going to find yeah. out what this, what this character's yeah. name is. I mean, I I hundred percent get that, but I really feel that there could have been more bits with Kari about talk. Like maybe she's having second thoughts about doing like. I don't know. I like we said. There's snippets. There's a good. There's a good idea. There's a good nugget of um, plot and story that elevates Kari's character and even makes her like maybe makes her like. Look, I know I wasn't around for most of the Digim D- Destin fights, but I was there for Miles and the Dark Masters. But this has to stop, and it, and it, and it eventually pushes her over the edge to force her Digimon to dark Digivolve into that Ni- <laughs> Nyar Nyaromon. Is that the in training form? That's the in training form, Nyaromon. Okay, yeah. That forces Nyaromon to digivolve into whatever the frack she digivolved into. Let's see what that character's name is, because we don't get we don't get a name for that one. No, it's just like dark digivolve and she literally becomes an angel of death. I do I do like the moment when when she's like when she's sitting there go when when she's trying to figure out like I don't I don't know what's going on. Why do I feel this way? Like that like, initial we, shock? Because she's because she's like uh, Kari, what's going on? What's happening? Are you okay? Like, talk to me. And you see like this this like evil um, this like evil aura coming out of Kari, and then you also see it on Nyaramon. And she's like, I don't know what's happening. Why do I feel so funny? I don't. I like she's pleading for. And I think it's a good moment. Like, don't get me wrong. Like again, good moments convoluted as hell plot line. Yeah. Um, um. I, I just like it when like when she sees this, like her crest flashes on her forehead and then she just grows all this darkness and it forces her Nyromon to dark digivolve. Like it is a good moment. Um Car- remind okay. me, but Kari o- has the Ophanimon. crest. Of- Ophanimon. What? 
Ofanimon is the it's Ofanimon dark uh it's Ofanimon fall down mode which is like her so the fallen angel character. Oh yeah, it makes sense. So anyway, what were you saying? I was saying that I was going to ask if Kari's crest is the crest of light if I remember that correctly because I know TK's is, I know TK's is the crest of hope. But I want to say is I want to ask if Kari's is the crest of light. Crest of light, you're right. Yeah, because it kind of makes sense that even though she has the crest of light, her Digimon just like her crest goes dark. And yeah, she's I, li- able I like. To... And, and that's the that's the only way that you can like justify a mega evolution for me that this is this quick because it's a dark it's a dark evolution. It's this mm-hmm. it's this it's this unholy kind of thing that's going to happen. And then like she has this moment of like, okay, now absorb absorb her, and then she does, oh. and then like like just go in there, the come out of the. Uh, Cruel Angel's thesis starts playing, and this white uh, Lilith starts coming down from the yeah. heavens. And you're just like, oh my god! I'm watching a different anime all of a sudden. Yep. I'm like, um, what, did I, what am I watching? The Evangelion rebuild film. This is weird. It's so wild to me. Like the the similarities are insane. But anyway, yeah. so I want to talk so a little bit real quickly. I do want to just mention that the the the, the Digivolution sequences when they all decide to digivolve to their champions, their ultimates and their megas looks really good. Yeah. Um, when it like cuts, when they, you can see them all in the screen and that uh, they all have like the split screen effect going on. That looks really good. It does. Um, and I'm real, and I love the Omnimon digivolution sequence for this movie. Oh, when you, you see work with the- and, and they, the two of them like, sw- like swerve around and yeah. like form. And like, I was like, that's cool. That's they cool. Actually, they do a, uh, they do an homage to the DNA Digivolve sequence. And I'm like, yeah, finally we get that. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. Uh, and again, the fight sequence, like the, the three night, the three, uh, night Digi- Digimon and, uh, Mekumon's mega, that looks really good. Like it's a really good animated movie, uh, yeah. like, like sequence. And, and I love, I love that when when the ground starts shaking and Omnimon goes after try to save Ty and Ty like looks at him and says you know just wordlessly I'm good get Matt and Mako mm-hmm. and I like that's a good moment dude it is. like that's a good moment I was well, so into this movie and then I started thinking like wait what's the goal here yeah <laughs> whose goal is what mm-hmm. um. um. I I want to talk about that moment a little bit more too because I do love how Ty essentially sacrifices himself, thinking, "Oh, I can take care of myself." You get Ty, you get Matt and uh, and Mako, yeah. because I would agree that Ty is selfless. I mean, he does have his moments, he does have his issues throughout the, the franchise. Like, you know, why are we fighting? Did you no know, no matter what we do, the Digimon are always going to get this bad reputation. Yeah, they, and all that, you know, that decent like self existential stuff. But he'll always think about his friends first before himself. And that shines where he says, you know, wordlessly nods to Omnimon, he gets Matt and Mako. And I just wanted to cry for Coralmon. Where he's oh my just god, like, that's that, so sad. Uh, whoever voiced Coralmon, I don't know if that's Tom Fan who voices um, Agumon. It broke me. It it's, broke my heart because Matt's holding no Mako is holding Koromon, yeah. right? And and she and he's just wait, where's Ty? Where is he? Like I can't protect him if I don't see where is like it's so upsettingly like, sad, dude. Ugh. Um, it's a great moment. Uh again, great moments. There's so many good there's so many good moments in this in this movie. It just doesn't come together very well. Yeah. Um, and I'm not 100. I mean, I know Ty is, he's not dead. He's coming back for the last movie. But oh yeah, no, he's not. When dead. Matt picks up the the goggles and he puts them on, kind of making him ipso facto leader. Yeah, he doesn't look good with the goggles on though. Nah, that's doesn't Ty's work thing. for him. No, it doesn't. Um, I also want to. I also just want to mention that I like the moment in the real world when they're t- when they go to the real world for the first time and everyone's scared of the Dig- Digimon like. Uh, like it, it's Digimon are we know that at this point the Digimon have been attacking the real world. Um, a lot of lot of famous Digimon that we see that we saw in the original series showing up. Um, and and uh, when they see these Digimon with these people, they're like, oh, hey, come with us. You need to discuss. You can't be looking at the Digimon are dangerous. You can't be with them. Blah blah blah. Um, I did find it. I always find it strange that Izzy isn't the one to remember that his computer works. 
that it's always mm-hmm. Ty. Because like when they're when they're like, hey Izzy, we're in the real world now, which means your computer works. And, like, and Izzy's like, oh right. I'm like, Izzy, are you an idiot? Like, what's going on? Are, like, you, bro, are you okay? I'm like, bro, you know that your computer should be working. What the heck? Yeah. I also do like that he keeps comforting Mimi. I think that's yeah. pretty cute. That he that that whenever um whenever Mimi is uh when it, what, like there's a moment when i think it's tk and make uh, tk and may Kari. no i think it's tk and may joe and kari and izzy and mimi are when they're back in the digital world during the fight with uh, during the four of them um and and uh tk is like holding on to mimi's shoulders like comforting her i think that's a good i think that's a sweet moment you I, mean when izzy's holding on her shoulder yeah yeah thank you i'm kind of rooting for them I told I told you I've been rooting for them since it. the beginning. <laughs> I'm starting to root for them. Kind of like, okay, I can see it. I can like, see when, it. when Izzy obviously like when he sees like when Mimi sends her sends him the photo of her back in the in the second film where she was doing like and Izzy just went beat red and rushes over wearing a bow tie. I'm like, bro, you trying. I, I get you. Yeah. Like the I, one time I, when I'm he made cow with when Hebe Cowell was like cool, she's like, I'm gonna play Wig Woman for a second. Yeah, I'm kind of starting to root for them. Also, because you brought up Hebe Cowell, so she's dead. I guess I don't know what she's up to. I don't know she, what's going on with her because she gets like she like has this moment where like the dark ocean like takes her right, um, and she's very clearly in the dark ocean. I, I would imagine that it's the same one, um, and so she's like taken by it, and she's like floating around, and you just see um, what the dude Sarazawa, what's his name? Nishijima. Nishijima. Um, and he's like, oh, good. Um, and so he's so he's sitting there like he's sitting there, he's like, Oh, Himmy, I couldn't save you. Uh, like he's just he's just thinking to himself, like, I couldn't save you. I can't believe I can't believe you're gone. Blah, blah, blah. And I was just thinking, like, I don't get why she was here in the first place anymore. Again, like it's I, I really believe she should have been the Jedi character because Jedi is mm-hmm. not really in this movie. And you no. could have you could have really like if she was being possessed by King Drazel, whoever that guy is, um, you could have really done something really interesting about Himikawa being this like and like that would make the reboot work out because she's like the whole point of the reboot was to get back to Hypermon and like the whole thing. The fact that it. Yeah. Oh, are the harmonious ones gone? I don't know. That's a good question. I didn't think about that this. Is. Are the homeowners ones gone? They're talking about homeostasis. And honestly, I thought like homeostasis is what the heart, like the collective of the harmonious ones. But I guess their homeostasis is. A- well, no, we learned in the first movie that homeostasis is from beyond the, the digital world. Right, right, right. So uh, and the, the, the harmonious ones were like the, the like the ancient, uh, the ancient Digimon. And I just realized that they're probably gone. Although Elecmon was there and he wasn't he wasn't a new egg and then Jessmon and Alphamon were megas already. I call bullshit on is he calling him a champion? Um uh so maybe the reboot just didn't work like I, it was intended to. Maybe they are still there. I that's weird. Yeah, I this is definitely in a movie where I have a whole lot more questions. And what than happened after. to Davis and his friends? Yeah. What come on? And yeah. whatever we find out in the next movie by the way no spoilers yeah i'm just like uh because this is definitely one of those times where i'm just like i have so many questions and i'm not in a lot of answers and i get that there's like they're getting ready for this big fight against i am assuming king drazel and maybe both king drazel and it could homeostasis be, it could be homeostasis because i guess homeostasis I, also wants to destroy the world i mean even when hackmon shows up he does his big expedition dump exposition dump i'm like okay cool we're getting a little bit more info but at the same time it's a cool this still doesn't answer my questions yeah because i'm kind of sitting here going like okay well homeostasis wants to wants the digital world and the human world to be in balance so he he so he sent the digidestin all right well now he doesn't think the digidestin can do anything so he's going to send jessmon to destroy mekumon and mekumon but he i guess i guess i guess that's it and then and then King Drazel wants to keep Mekumon, but but apparently it was King Drazel's plan for Gatomon and wait, what did I say? Opheliamon? Yeah. Um, and 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 this character to merge because they have to merge. What was this always the plan that 
that Kari was going to turn dark and then they were and, and then they were going to merge into Evangelion and they were going to destroy the world and cause the third impact. <laughs> Ophelia Mon, Digimon 2, Evangelion Mon. I'm sorry, that was bad. No, like Lil, um, Lil, Lil, Lilith Mon. Like Lilith it's, Mon, yeah. It's, 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 at, it's the end of Evangelion when um what is that girl's name? Ray. Ray. When Ray turns into giant to when Ray merges with Lilith and, and become it's the same freaking scene. Yeah. Yeah. I don't mind a ripoff. I don't. But like what's the point what's the uh-huh. purpose here is the like i the, you didn't give me good enough lead up to actually care about the fact that this happening to kari outside of the fact that i like kari as a character from the previous show mm-hmm. she's barely been a character in this rant in this series and now right. you're all of a sudden telling me like oh she was she was going to merge she was always going to merge so that was never gonna i don't know man i don't know i'm so confused know. at the end of this movie i'm just confused yeah uh, 100%. If it wasn't super late last night, I probably would have just chucked in future, just be like, I need to know. I'm I'm, I'm sick of it. I'm well, not ben. sick of it. I'm not sick of it, but at the same time, it was one of those things is like, I know I gotta go to sleep, but at the same time, I wanna know. But thankfully, we're about to know soon, because we're gonna, this is like, that's our next film. That's our next uh, thing we gotta watch. I was about to say, so hopefully we will get answers in yeah. Digimon Adventure Try Future. Mm-hmm. So why don't we call it there? Yep, I, I really don't have a whole lot more to say about this movie. I would definitely say that this is my least favorite of the films thus far. I think far. we forgot to rate the last one. I think we did too, but I will definitely rate this one as six point five. I'm I'm at six point five also. Most like I think the fights are really well animated. I think there's some good character moments, but I just don't think. I think at the end of this movie, you're just left with more questions. And at the mm-hmm. penultimate, at the penultimate film, and having no answers, not just some answers. But no answers. Like I'm, that's a mistake. Not <clears> only <throat> that, it doesn't set the stakes. It doesn't put the well. The whole the- world is apparently going to be destroyed. Well, okay, it, you, let me rephrase. It doesn't. The set third the stake- impact is coming, Ben. You're right. Right. It doesn't set the stakes well. Man, the how 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 many how what the what's the Venn diagram of Ava fans and Digimon fans that are going to be watching <laughs> this and get any I of these references? Know. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, if, if you if you get the references, please put it in the descript- put it in the comments. I'd love to hear. Mm-hmm. All right, well that's 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 it. That's it. I would give this one a six point five as well. Yeah. Um, I'm just I'm just confused and not in a fr- not in a way where it's like, look, I didn't I found the Avon the Evangelion films to be confusing, but that was kind of fun to kind of piece together because the answers are there if you want to look for them and you want to like discuss them and piece them together and things like that but here it's i mean i don't i can't believe i'm comparing evangelion to digimon um yeah but like time here i am <laughs> but here but here we are but like here like i just this is the kind of thing where i'm like you're you you need to be you need to be starting to give me answers here you need to yeah. tell me that uh you need to tell you need to give me, give me something because right now going into the final movie i'm just confused and i don't trust that you're going to wrap everything up in a way that's going to be satisfactory I feel, once again, I also can't believe I'm about to compare Digimon to Evangelion, uh, especially specifically the rebuild films. With the rebuild films, they're structured and made in a way that does make you think that, like you said, the answers are there. You just have to think about it a little bit harder. But with Evangelion, it is a much deeper story and is has much deeper themes and they get across. I mean, yes, it does. It might seem confusing, but you understand it. This one, I feel with coexistence, I feel that coexistence is trying to be deep, is trying to make it, it's trying to make its story a lot deeper than it really is. And they're fumbling along. They're trying yeah. too hard. Whereas Evangelion, it, they knew what they were doing. This one is just like, let's try to be like it and see. And and they're like, oh, wait, I we think we did it, and it, it doesn't work out. I think our co-host Ryan is having an aneurysm as we're comparing Evangelion to Digimon. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, it, to be fair, the comparison was only made because at the end of this film, an yeah, angel shows 100, up. Um, 100%. 100%. But, but to be fair, Digimon only... The, the biggest comparison Digimon can make is not Evangelion. It's probably Pokemon, right? Yeah. Like, I just don't... I, I think baseline, I don't understand the goals of the villains because we haven't met either. 
Right. We haven't met homeostasis and we haven't met King Drazel. And I don't, mm-hmm. I just don't get what their purpose is and what they're trying to do. Me either. All right. Well, that'll do it. That will do it. We that got is. More, we got one more of the try and then we got last evolution Kazuna and I'm looking forward to that one. Yeah. Both of which I remember to be pretty good. Be interested to see this one, uh, to see this wrap up, uh, wrap up. And then after last evolution Kazuna, we will uh, wait patiently for the American release of Digimon Adventure 2, the beginning. Mm-hmm. And we will, we will return to discuss that when that is released in America. Yeah. Um, but that'll do it, guys. That will. That'll, that'll do it for this one. Uh, of course, you can check out our website at fakenerpodcast.com for all of the information of what we're currently what we're currently up to. Uh, lots of shows are impacted during the because of the strikes, as Hagaftra has asked us to hold off on a few of our shows, such as Fakner's Watch or Cinephiles. Um, this is fine because, once again, Digimon is a foreign production and is not struck content. So we are able to discuss them, which is why we took the opportunity to do so. Yeah. Um, so there are plenty of other things, but we are doing plenty of other things, such as Basement Arcade and Book Club. If you're interested in comic books or video games, those are there, and you can find them all on our website at fakenerpodcast.com where you can also support us financially if you'd like on our Public or our Patreon, uh, which are linked below. So everything you can check out is linked below. Just check it out. Greatly appreciate it. Um, thank you to everyone who listens and watches the live stream. Eh, I guess I don't do that on these shows, but whatever. Um, Fakener Podcast on all the social medias, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, all at Fakener Podcast. Fakenerguys at gmail.com if you'd like to get in touch with us personally. I'm a BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll... You can, I am at beat. Sorry, I've something has happened in my life where I have to change my yeah the outro my my outro. So you can find me at BT McClure on Instagram and Twitter, where I also write for AtomicKeekdom.com. And where can people find you? Well, you could find me humming both the Digimon and Evangelion theme songs because now they're both in my brain. Thank you, anime. At Bed Magnet Twenty Seven on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Threads, and you could also find me writing for Fusion Gaming Magazine, Old School Gamer Magazine, GoNintendo.com, and playing Mary Frankenstein in D and Dark. Oh, uh, one last note on Digimon: the music is really good. Yeah, there's a sequence around the campfire that they just play the 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 a melodic version of the theme song, and I liked it. All right, that'll do it, guys. Until next time you see us, we are now departing the station.